my friends, this is Logan Jacob, and I am back with another AUM Basics video for you today. Before we get started, though, I want to get a couple of things out of the way. First off, thank you so much to everybody that has subscribed to my channel. Since the last video, we are approaching 500 viewers or 500 subscribers. Um, I know in the YouTube world that seems pretty light, but for me that's huge. That's way more than I ever thought I would get. So thank you so much for all of you that are that are supporting the channel and leaving comments. I, I love talking to you guys. If you have not subscribed yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and hit the like button while you're down there. I would greatly appreciate it. it gets the video out there. It gets more people learning some of this stuff. So thank you so much to all of you. Also, I wanted to throw out that I have uh, an album up on. Uh, Apple Music and Spotify and YouTube Music and all of those places called Soliloquy in C Minor. You can search for Logan Jacob on any of the services and you should find it. Uh, if you're having trouble find it, add the Soliloquy part to it and you should be able to find it there. You can also find it on Bandcamp if you want to purchase it and support me directly. But just listening to it on any of the services is good enough for me. I'm just excited to know that people are listening to it. So that is Soliloquy in C minor by Logan Jacob. I'll put links in the description so you can find all of that stuff. I do have a Patreon page set up. I don't expect uh, anything at all to, for watching this video, but if you've got a few extra bucks to throw around and, and you'd like to make sure that things keep going, go ahead and head over there and you know subscribe for a couple dollars a month and that'll let me know that people appreciate this stuff and give me a little bit of extra money to spend on apps and things that I can review. Okay, now that all that's out of the way, what we're going to talk about in this video, as you have guessed from the title, is live looping in AUM. Um, I went over to the iPad, one of the iPad Music Facebook groups, and I asked uh, what you guys wanted to see, what you guys wanted to learn from this, and that was by far the, the most popular answer. Um, there are a few other answers there that, that folks gave, and I'll, I'll try to get to that stuff here pretty soon. But for today, I do want to talk a little bit about live looping in AUM. Now, before I start, I'm going to caveat a little bit here. Number one, I am not a live looper. Uh, that's not how I perform. I tend to do more ambient generative type music, but I have played around with live looping a little bit. And um, I think it's interesting. I think you can do some fun stuff with it. But I will tell you, AUM is not the best tool for this. I'm going to go ahead and say that right off the bat. You have to do some roundabout things. It's not intuitive. Um, and it's not really something that I think AUM is meant to do just yet. Now, I'm hoping that they're going to build in some features in the future, but for right now, it's just not the best tool for it. If you are a live looping musician and that's what you do all the time, there are better iPad apps for you to use. Um, even the live loop grid view in GarageBand is better. Um, I know a lot of folks use Beatmaker 3 and Cubasis and, and apps like that. I don't use any of those apps because that's not the kind of music I make. But... If you are interested in live looping on the iPad, I would suggest checking out some other videos that talk about some of those apps. But it is possible to do it in AUM. If you're already comfortable with AUM and you like the layout and you want to just add a live looping element to your music that you're using IUM for already, AUM I should say, sorry, for already, then uh, we can do that. And I'm gonna show you how to do a little bit of that here. So. I do have a mouse hooked up, so hopefully you can see where I'm clicking. There's a few things that I can't do with the mouse that I need to be able to touch the screen uh, for ease, so I'll try to point that out whenever I do it. So we're going to split this into three sections, and I'm just going to create, uh, I'm going to use this to create a little jam track that I can solo along with on my guitar uh, using some live looping elements. Now, I'm only going to really have one loop set up uh, in different instruments but you could easily see how you can get multiple loops out of it depending on what you want to do. So the three different ways that I use uh, AUM to live loop are number one by recording and using the file player. And this is just like if you were going to preload loops into the GarageBand live looping or preload loops into Ableton or something like that. AUM has a way to kind of do that for you. So you don't have to uh, go into those other programs and you can record everything straight from AUM using your favorite audio units and all of that good stuff. So that's going to be the first way. The second way, what I'm going to use to create keyboard and bass line is going to be using the Atom Piano Roll. 
which is a paid app, but it's pretty cheap. Uh, you can find it on the App Store, and it's a great tool for for this kind of thing. I've used it in a few of my pieces that have a continuous chord progression or something along those lines. And then the third way is using Enzo, which basically acts like a loop pedal. If you're a guitarist that's experimented with live loops, the Enzo is essentially just exactly like any other loop pedal. And I'm gonna show you how to get that set up. So the first thing I'm gonna do, because it makes it easier for me, is to create my drum track. And to do that, we're gonna use the idea of, of recording and getting the file player in there. And that'll save us a little bit of the uh, DSP up here. I do wanna say from the beginning that I'm using an iPad Pro, uh, the 12.9 inch, and this is the 2018 model. So it's a fairly new iPad Pro. It's got a beefy processor, so I don't have to worry too much about clipping out. But if you're on a, an iPad mini from a few years ago, or even an iPhone, you may have to you know, conserve your DSP a little bit. And using this file player is one good way to do that. So what I'm gonna do here is create my drum track, and I'm just gonna use uh, Rui's Maker just the classic drum machine, just the plain old regular Ruiz maker. And I'm gonna control that with XOX, which basically looks like a, uh, an 808 or a 909, any of those Roland um, effects. So the first thing I have to do is tell XOX that it's gonna program Ruiz maker. So I'll go over here and click on the Rosetta XOX, and now those are linked together. You can see that in the MIDI routing here. You can also see that I've already got my launch key uh, keyboard connected to MIDI control. I'm gonna turn that off for now because I'm gonna use it for some other things here in a minute. Okay, so I have a preset made. So this is the preset drum machine that I made for this loop that I'm creating. I like it. Uh, it's just kind of a, a slight modification on one of the other pre-made kits there. And then in XOX, I've already made a beat. So we're gonna call this LJ Groove. Now I have this set up so that it is a six, it's a uh, 64 step sequence, but I have it broken down into four 16 step sequences. So if I hit play, you'll hear it kind of loop through there. So I've got uh, loop one is what starts it, and then loop two happens twice, and that's kind of the middle two beats. And then loop three is the same beat with a little bit of a fill in there just to kind of give it some interest. So it sounds like a four bar repeating drum pattern. And that sounds like this. All right, nothing terribly innovative there, just a groovy little beat to get things going along. So what I wanna do is I wanna record that as a four bar loop pattern that I can then put into the file player and just have it play back. So I'm gonna record the track. And if you're not familiar with recording tracks in AUM, I do have another video all about that uh, that you can check out later on. And I'm just gonna leave everything set as it is. As soon as I hit record, it will start playing that back for me. I have my sync quantum set to one bar right now. Later on, I'm gonna change that to four bars, but for the moment, uh, I don't really need to, it doesn't matter. So. As soon as I hit record, it'll start playing that, and I'm just gonna let it go for those four measures to get that one 64-step uh, or four-measure loop in there. So here we go. And I don't need any of this here anymore, so I'm just gonna delete that channel. Remove, remove, and I'm gonna open up a file player for my drums. So file player is right here, and tap to load, tap to load, go to AUM recordings, and then I'll dig through and find the untitled that's for today, and the trimmed loop is what I want. So we're gonna loop it, and we're also gonna tell it to sync, and that'll make sure that it starts with whatever the uh, quantum sync is set at, it'll start in that time period, whenever I hit play enable, okay? And I'll show you what I mean by that here in just a second. I'm also gonna go ahead and normalize it. I think it's pretty well normalized, but that just helps to make sure the sound is, is up to snuff where it needs to be there, okay? So now, if I hit play, and I've got play enabled here, it'll start playing the loop.
Now, one thing that this sync quantum allows you to do is right now, if I turn it off, it will automatically start on the next downbeat, no matter when I start it. So if I start it there, it'll come in on the next downbeat. But I'm doing a four measure loop and I always want it to start at the front of that four measure. So if I turn it off, I don't want it to start again until the beginning of the loop. So I'm gonna kick that up to four bars and you will see that this changes to, to reflect that that's now four bars. So I'm gonna turn that off and now I can start it in the middle of the second bar, but it's gonna wait until we get through the first four bars and it's not gonna start until bar five. So now no matter when I stop it or when I start it, it's always gonna wait until the beginning of the next four bar sequence to get going. So I will start it now and it's gonna wait until bar 16 or 17, I guess. So it's always gonna start on a division of four there and that way it'll line up with my other loops whenever I get those going. Now, here in a minute, I'll uh, show you how to hit that play enable button with your controller. I don't wanna do that just yet though because I'm gonna need my keyboard for some other things and I'm, I'm using the same keyboard for all of my controls. Okay, so that's my simple beat, my drum beat, and of course I can go in and add whatever I want if I uh, want to put a little bit of, um, you know, distortion or something on it. I can do my overdrive. That's always fun. If I want to give it that kind of lo-fi feel that's really popular right now, I can go to the tape cassette and we use tape cassette two because why not? And that'll give it that kind of lo-fi sound to it. Of course we can bring up the saturation or bring down the low pass filter, whatever we need to do. I like that, so I'll leave it on that. And none of that affects uh, any of the other stuff going on. Now the DSP does kick up a little bit there, you'll notice because of the tape cassette, but it doesn't mess with us too much. I'm actually gonna turn that off for now. I probably should have recorded that effect into it um, earlier before I recorded, but it's not a big deal. You can do that if you want to, if you want that effect in there all the time or if you wanna be able to trigger it later on, whatever you need to do. Okay, so let's get a baseline going. And this would kind of be part two for us. So uh, we're gonna, create our baseline using the Atom Piano Roll. So I'm gonna use the Moog Model D, because if we're gonna have bass, we might as well have it come from Moog, and I'm gonna get a MIDI track to be able to control this. So I like the, I'm a bass player, and I played jazz for a long time, so I tend to like the uh, plucked stand-up sound. Now this is, uh, the Model D is a loud synth, so I tend to bring the, uh, the volume down just a little bit so that it doesn't overwhelm. The pluck stand-up doesn't do too bad, but if you have something that's on like a pulse wave or something, it's, it's really gonna overpower everything else. So I, I usually pull that down. Now we're gonna go to audio unit MIDI processor and we're gonna open up the Atom Piano Roll, which it gives us right here. And notice it already says clip one there because you can record multiple clips as you need it and it'll name them differently. Now, something that I'm not crazy about with the Atom Piano Roll is that it's a little bit difficult to um, extend your loop. There's not just a button that says, how many bars do you want your loop to be? Instead, you have to grab it and drag it over and it's almost impossible to do with the mouse. There it goes. And you have to really be able to zoom out and see everything, and it's it's just kind of a pain. I'm I think they should do it better. I'm going to switch over to using my fingers so that I can zoom out, and sometimes my finger will grab it a little better. Well, at least I'm zoomed out now. See, this is, you know, it's not perfect. It's one of those things that it just you're you're not going to have to deal with that in something like. Uh, you know, using the GarageBand live loops or, or something like that. It is kind of a little bit of a pain there. Okay, so bring that back to the beginning. So to make this all connect, I am going to first tell 
my keyboard, which I'm using a launch key MIDI, uh, or a Novation launch key 49, and that's going to control the Atom Piano Roll, and then I'm going to tell the Moog to be controlled by that Atom Piano Roll. So now when I play on my keyboard, we can hear that it's coming through. So it does go all the way through it. Now to be able to record what I want to do, I'm going to put uh, the loop record button on and that way it'll just automatically record anything that I'm doing here. So when I hit play, the playhead is going to start going through and I can start recording whenever I want to um, and it'll just keep looping it on top of it. Uh, so you kind of got to get it in one take unless you want to go back and, and delete it uh, because it's, it's going to dub everything over the top of it like a looper pedal would. So we're going to see if I can do that playing some left hand synth bass keyboard. I'd be a lot more comfortable with my actual bass in my hands, but this will work for me. So I'm gonna get, get it going. I'm gonna let the drum beat go for one time and then I'll add my loop in. down a little bit so you can hear my voice okay now you may have noticed when I was recording that the sound uh, was a little clipped on some of the notes but it did record the full-length MIDI notes there so you can hear it uh, coming in correctly and if I need to do it make an adjustment or something I could I could grab it delete it whatever I needed to do so I've got my baseline set up now I'm going to take that off because I don't want what I'm about to do with my keyboard to affect what's going on in the bass line there. So now I want to add some keys. That's not what I meant to do. Remove channel. I'll always hit the wrong button. All right. We're going to drag this one over here. And I'm going to use the retro keys. Or the retro piano, I should say. It does take a little bit to load that, which I think is interesting. And I'm not just you know absolutely crazy about the layout uh, of the app it doesn't resize with everything so it's a little bit janky but it's got a great sound um, even just the initial sound is is great and I'll show you that here in a second the first thing I'm gonna do though is add well that's not easy to do with the mouse another instance of the Adam piano roll and notice it calls this one clip 2 so again I'll get my launch key affecting that and I'm going to tell this. So you have to be careful here because I now have two Adam Piano rolls. So uh, they're in channel four, which is what that first four is. And then this is slot two. All right. So I need the slot two to go to the Retro Piano app. Okay. So now, now my keys are coming through. I'm going to go and turn them up a little bit so that I can hear them good hear them well, I guess I should say. And let's see. Now the clicking you're hearing, by the way, is my mic on the thing. So I think uh, those soul keys will be perfectly fine. What is this CS, baby? Either one of those will be okay, but we'll just use the soul keys for this. Now I'm gonna do the same thing here I'm gonna loop record and again I'll go ahead and start it first I need to drag I gotta go through this whole process again because it takes forever and we gotta use our fingers again to make it big enough the mouse with the iPad is not 100% there yet but I like to use it so you can at least see where I'm clicking without having to record a separate video Okay, so I've got my four bar loop set up. I've got loop record set up so that whatever I start playing, it'll hit for me. Now let me make sure that my mic's not in the way here. I can play. Cool, just using some Frank Mantooth jazz voicings. By the way, if you haven't figured out a progression is just kind of a standard um, progression. It's the all along the watchtower progression, uh, A minor G and F and then back up to G um, as kind of a turnaround there. 
and you can add extra notes. I'm doing some jazz voicings here that are going to add some extra notes to it, sevenths and ninths and all that good stuff. So whatever chord progression you want to do works perfectly fine. All right, so I'll get this started and I'll let it go for a measure and then I'll add in my keys. Not the record button, we're just gonna hit the play button. All right, here we go. I was a little early on my right hand. There it goes. <laughs> and you saw that it added it there. Again, we'll bring that down a little bit. And caveat that I'm not a very good keyboard player, <laughs> if you hadn't noticed. Okay, so now we've got this kind of you know, lo-fi groove thing going uh, with some jazz chords. And again, here in a minute, I'll uh, program the start and stop here to be able to uh, hit a button and have those start and stop as I need to. So once again, I'm going to take the launch key MIDI out of it. So those two are set up two different ways. I've got my file player looping my drums. I've got Adam piano roll as a MIDI looper. Uh, controlling the Model D and the Retro Piano. Now I'm going to use my guitar and the audio unit Enzo, which again is a paid app. Now how I set this up, um, I set it up so that I can basically turn, uh, I can solo over the top of it. So my hardware input, I'm using a Tascam 4x4 and my guitar is going to go into channel 2 there. And then I'm going to have a separate channel for Enzo. So I'm actually going to do a bus in. So we'll go mix bus A and audio unit extensions and find audio damage Enzo right there. And then I'm going to send to bus A there so that as long as I have that activated it's sending my guitar signal through and, and into the other bus okay and then I'm just gonna mute this channel for now because I'm not gonna do anything with it until I start actually soloing so everything I want all the guitar signal going into Enzo for the time being okay so now first let me grab my guitar real quick Now, just because I'm sure some people want to know, I'm playing a uh, Fender Telecaster that I've customized. I have a couple of EMG humbucking pickups in it, and I am running into a Vox. It's one of the new little mini heads. I think they're called the uh, MC50, something like that. It's the one that's supposed to be an AC um, sounding head. It's got the nanotube technology and has a line out that I think sounds really great. And I've got a snake bite reverb pedal. And when I start soloing, I'll kick on an LPB1 booster. So here's my guitar. Okay, and like I said, I love that that Vox sound, just going directly line out and not having to mic it through an amp or anything. I think it sounds pretty good. Okay, so now we need to record into Enzo. I'm actually going to turn that guitar up just a little bit to compare to everything else. Oh, we're peaking. Okay, that's better. All right, so you have to do a little bit of setup on Enzo, and sometimes it can be finicky, and we're going to see how it does with me. So I am going to use a four bar. Uh, I'm going to use a four bar length of my loop and then I'm going to tell my leak my uh, unit to be a measure so this is four measures okay if I change that to beat it'll be a four beat loop or however I want to do it 
And then for quantizing, I'm gonna use a measure long quantize so that I can tell it to go on to the next thing, but that doesn't kick in until the next measure. Again, it's kind of that sync quantum idea there. Now, my trigger over here is set to record. So whenever I set that to record, I'll start recording and you'll notice that the trigger button will turn into something else. And that's what I have to do here. So post record, do I want it to just start playing or do I want it to be able to add to it and overdub on top of it? Um, and I can make that decision. I, in this case, I want it to start overdubbing because I'm gonna overdub a few different things before I have it play. And then I'll do my little solo jam or whatever over the top of it. For the feedback, because I am doing full looping, uh, I'm going to set this to 100% because I want everything that I dub in to all be the same level. Um, if I wanted it to gradually fade off, I would set it a little bit lower than that and uh, it'll you know, eventually you'll lose what you originally set in there. But that's not what I, I'm treating it like a full blown looper pedal at this point. Now what we're gonna see is sometimes it will automatically do the four bars, sometimes it doesn't. So let's let's just kind of see how that rolls here. So I will start, now uh, I'm gonna do a pre-roll for this. Actually no, what I'm gonna do is because I wanna use the drums is I'm gonna go ahead and start this going. Now you notice that it already triggered to start recording, but it's not actually gonna record until it gets something. Now what it did with there, okay, we're gonna back this up a little bit to reverse. Now the way that I have this set is if I tell it to trigger there, it's gonna wait four bars and then it's gonna start recording because that's what my sync quantum is set to. So I'll hear everything go through one time and then on that fifth measure, I'll be able to start recording and it should automatically turn it off and let me start recording the next thing over the top of it. Sometimes it does it, sometimes it, don't, it does not. Like uh, I said, it's a little bit finicky sometimes, but we'll see how it goes. All right, hitting play instead of record. So I've got my trigger recorded there. One, two, here we go. And and then I can go to the next thing. Record something else. got this looped thing that's all my guitar going over the top of it and I've turned it down quite a bit so that I'm not covering myself up here and you notice there at the end that I just hit the trigger so it went to play so now it's just playing over and over again if I decide I want to add something to it I can hit the plus and it'll let me add something so here we go So I just added that extra little ditty on top of it. Now that I've got my loop set up, I'm just going to close that out. I'm going to eject that so that it's no longer sending my signal into bus A. I'm going to unmute this, turn it down just a smidge, and I'm just going to jam a little bit.
there you have it. That's pretty much everything that I would do to get this thing set up. Except now I want to be able to turn that stuff on and off. So there's a few different ways that you can do this depending on how you want to have it set up. So we're going to go in and we're going to use our keyboard as MIDI control to be able to set and change uh, by hitting buttons on the MIDI controller and we don't have to worry about it doing anything else. So the first thing I'm going to do is click the little hamburger menu up here and I'm going to hit MIDI control and notice that there are no connected MIDI sources right now. So if I click on that, it gives me all the things that I want to be able to send into MIDI control. So I'm going to send the launch key in and then I have two options. I could either go into this menu and affect all of the channels or I can just do it from here. So it, I actually saw this trick on a, another video. I didn't realize you could do it here, but I, I like being able to, uh, to just click on the channel and hit this and it shows me all of the controls for that channel. So I'm going to control the play enable for the drums. And on my keyboard, I've got some little launch pad style uh, pads on here. So I'm going to hit learn and I'm going to hit that button. So now whenever I hit that button, you can see that the play enable turns on and off. Now I'm going to go here to MIDI channel six and hit the same thing. And I'm going to try this. It wasn't working for me earlier. We'll see if I hit the start stop button and learn there. Now we can turn it off, but for some reason it's not letting me turn it back on uh, with the MIDI button. And I don't know why. If anybody can uh, give me any uh, help there, maybe figure out maybe why it's doing that, then I would greatly appreciate it. But for now, I'm going to do is something else. I'm actually just going to bypass it with this button. So you'll notice that when it actually just ejects it out. Now the problem with that is that it doesn't line up in the sync quantum the way I want it to. So I have to kind of be mindful of that when I'm playing and I'll show you what I mean here in a minute. So for the second control, I'm going to hit learn. I'm going to do the same thing. So now I can bypass that in and out with that button. And uh, then I'm going to come over here to Enzo. And uh, I'll just do the same thing. I'll just do a bypass with it as well. So Enzo, and I've got the different parameters that I can lock in here, All right? All kinds of different parameters, whatever I want to add to it. Um, it does have some effects and stuff in there. You can adjust the input level and things like that. Um, I'm just going to bypass it just to make it easy to go in and out. So learn with that one. So now I can drag it on in and out as I want to. Now I could also add a level control if I want to. So let's say volume for this one, learn, and I'll do that. So that's my voice now because I hit the wrong button. And here I want learn. So now I can adjust the volume of my guitar this way. All right, I think that's all I need to be able to do to get started. So I'm going to start this little session with just the keys. So I will come back over here so you can kind of see what I've got in and out. I'm going to take out the drums and I'm going to take out the bass and I'm going to take out the guitar. So we'll start it by just having the keys start jamming along. And then I'll bring in drums. And you may have noticed that those are now quantized correctly because of that play enable button, which helps. And now let's add the bass line. And this is not quantized. And then here's my looping guitar. Start jamming along.
and you get the idea there. All right. Oh, my baseline didn't turn off. There we go. <laughs> Hit my buttons too fast there. I guess my baseline didn't turn off. So that's kind of a basic look at how you can set up some live looping stuff in AUM. If you have any questions, be sure to hit me up in the comments, or if you have uh, something else that you'd like to learn how to do in AUM, be sure to let me know. Again, please be sure to like and subscribe. You can find me on Facebook at fb.me slash Logan Jacob Music, and I'm in the uh, all the iPad musician groups uh, pretty regularly. You've probably seen this post there before. So feel free to send me a message or a comment or ask me whatever questions you want, and I'll do my best to see if I can uh, figure something out for you. And if you have any other tips or tricks or other videos that people should check out, be sure to post those in the comments as well. I, I like to share the love a little bit and spread that stuff around. And in the description, I'll include a few links to some videos that I used to learn how to do some of this stuff. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you again soon.